teachers, do you have task cards laying around your classroom that you can't use right now because you're teaching virtually? Or maybe you're teaching in your classroom and you would just like to convert those task cards to digital so that way you can grade them electronically. Well, in this video, I am going to show you how to take your old task cards and turn them into digital task cards. So recently, I have been working on converting all of the task cards in my store to self-grading digital task cards. And as I've been updating all of those task cards and converting them in my store, I've received a couple messages asking me, how am I doing that? Because teachers have all these task cards sitting around that they can't use right now because they're teaching virtually. So I thought I'd go ahead and show you exactly how to do it because it's actually very, very simple. And one of the benefits of converting your task cards to digital is when you convert them to digital inside of Google Forums, then you can turn them into a quiz so that Google Forums will automatically uh, grade the task cards as students work on them. So you don't have to go through and grade afterwards. So it can actually save you a lot of time, even if you're just teaching inside of the classroom right now. So let's go ahead and jump on my computer. I'm gonna show you how to take a PDF of your task cards and convert those into a Google Forum self-checking digital task card. Okay, so these are some comparing fractions and decimals task cards that I have created, and I want to convert these into digital task cards. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to get an image of each task card. And what I usually use is the snipping tool. So you can search for this on your PC and it's usually automatically on your computer. So to use the snipping tool, I just click new and then I am going to highlight the first task card and then I want to save this as an image. So let me just find the folder that I want to save it to. And usually I just name them with the number of the task card. That's gonna make it the easiest when you are converting this to the digital inside of Google Forms. So I'm just gonna say this is one, and then I'm gonna repeat this for each task card. Okay, for the sake of this video, I'll just do the first four task cards and then let's go ahead and jump over to my Google Drive and I will show you how to convert these four task cards to digital. So here we are in my Google Drive and I'm gonna click on new and create a new forum. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this comparing fractions and decimals. And then usually what I like to do is I like to change the background color to something that's gonna go along with what's on the task card. So those task cards had yellows and oranges and pinks. So I think this one could be a fun one. You can also add a header to the top. Sometimes if there's a background image that are part of my task cards, I'll add a header to it as well. And the next thing I wanna show you that you need to do, and this is very important, is you're gonna go up here to the cog, which is the settings and I want you to go to quizzes and you're going to make this a quiz. So this will allow students to check their work when they are finished and you're going to click save. Now, if you have any special instructions for the task cards, sometimes like I'll add in a note about, this is how you type a fraction. So for example, I can put type a fraction as shown here and I could put an example. So any specific instructions you have, I always put those at the top. Now we're gonna go ahead and start adding in our task cards. So what I usually do is where the untitled question is, is I usually just put the task card number and then you're going to click the image icon and I am going to find that image on my computer and I'm going to upload it. Okay, so here's the first task card and know that if you need to make it bigger or smaller, you can do that. 
And then what I do, since this is a multiple choice one, is I'm just going to type in A, and actually if it sees you typing in A, B, C, D, it will suggest that you add them all and it will just give you those options. There's my options. We're gonna say that this is required, so students have to answer this question to submit the forum. And then the next thing we wanna do is add in the answer. So we're gonna click on answer key and you're going to decide how many points do you want this to be worth. I usually just make all of the task cards one point each. And then you are going to check the correct answer. So the correct answer is C and I'm going to click done. Now, if you want students to answer this question before they move on to the next question, you can do that by clicking these three little dots here and then say go to section based on answer. So then after I click on that, I can decide. So if they click on A, they go to section one. So basically they'd have to repeat the same section again. And then they could only go to the next section if they clicked the correct answer. I typically don't do that with my task card, so I'm gonna turn that off, but I just wanted to show that to you as another option. Now, when you are ready to add another task card, you're just gonna click on the plus sign, and you're just gonna repeat that process again. So I'm gonna type the task card number, upload the image, I'm gonna click required so that students have to answer it, and this is a multiple choice, so we're just gonna type A, um, we can also type the responses if we don't want to add all. And then I'm going to click on the answer key. I'm going to make it worth one point. And B is the correct answer, so I'm gonna select that. Okay, so after number two, I wanna go ahead and add another one. I'm gonna type in three. I'm gonna upload that third image. Now for this one, since this was not a multiple choice card, you have to think about if you have cards that weren't multiple choice, how you could do this differently. So a few things that I could do is I could make it a short answer and have students type the response. If I do that, I wanna be very specific in my instructions about how they should type the response. You could also do for things where students are ordering, a multiple choice grid is a great option. So I could basically say, um, each of the options here. And then in the columns, we would just say one, two, three, four, because they're putting them in order from uh, least to greatest. We are gonna require a response for each row. And then for the answer key, you can decide how many points each row is worth. So I would go ahead and make each row worth a point. And then basically students are going to put these in order from least to greatest. So let's see, least to greatest. So that is how you're going to go through making your task cards um, digital. If you want to preview what students would see, you can hit the eye icon at any time and you can go through and practice and make sure that everything is set up correctly. And this shows you what um, this one looked like. We'll hit submit, view score. So I answered all of them correct. I always test everything before I send it to students because I wanna make sure that I put all of the answers in correct. It's very common to put in an incorrect answer by mistake. And the other thing I do wanna show you if we go back to the main screen is this is self-checking. So you can actually go through and see how the majority of your students are answering the question. So you can see if there's a certain type of question that you need to reteach. You can also look at it by individual students if you assign it through Google Classroom, which is very, very helpful as well. All right, so there you have it. That is how you take your task cards that you have and you make them digital. Like I said, even if you're not teaching virtually, I find this to be tremendously helpful. It provides you another option for working with your students and you can make it a self-grading activity, which will save you time. And I'd love to hear from you. Are you in the process of turning your task cards into digital activities or any of your other PDF activities into digital activities? 
let me know in the comments below. I always love to hear from you guys. And then make sure to like and subscribe to this channel because it helps this channel to grow, it helps us reach more teachers, and it also lets you know when all of my latest videos are released because I don't want you to miss out on any of my teaching tips or strategies. So until next time, happy teaching.